Chicago. Nice. How is the trip been for you so far? Man, it's been awesome. I had some deep dish pizza last night at Gia Giordano's. Yeah. Man, yeah. that was sick. I loved it. So uh, now I'm hearing about some other places I got to check out. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, man, for Friday, this, this table, we have been busy. Yeah. Like, uh, not used to that on Fridays. You know, Fridays are usually super slow, one or two people. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks, Mike. It's all good. It's all good, fans. All good, man. Take care, brother. Thanks, man. Um, so, you know, it's been pretty awesome. I've been enjoying meeting everybody, and, you know, we got some diehard fans. Yeah. So he's so excited, he walked off and left his autograph. Oh, did he? Yeah. That's what, That's he, what he came back for, yeah. Hey, man, you got that uh, there, you know. But um, so you're known, obviously, as Jason, the yep. big Red Ranger. Um, so what were you doing before Power Rangers came calling? I was in high school, literally. That's right. You were the youngest member in the cast at the time, weren't you? I was in high school. Wow. Legit. So I taught martial arts legitimately. I wasn't an actor. I was typecast. I was a teenager with attitude. <laughs> Literally. Nice. So uh, I had a great time doing it. He still is. That's true, too. Cool, man. So what was it like for you being that young, playing the lead character on a hit TV show like that? It had to be like overwhelming. I, I, I can't even find words to describe it, man. I, uh, we'll keep it family friendly. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> It was, um, it was epic on so many levels. You know, we knew we had the number one show in the world. Uh, they told us stuff like that. But, I, you know, all you guys were this big. Yeah. So you weren't really talking a lot. There was a lot of hiding behind moms. No, 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 not me, man. I'm in my 30s. Oh, but at the time. Okay. You know, peeking around mom's leg and not really saying what's going on. Right. And now, you know, everybody's grown up. So I'm, we knew we reached hundreds of millions around the world, 140 countries, 90 languages. We knew it was massive, but we didn't know how deeply we reached those hundreds of million, millions of people. And now when I see the adults coming back with their grandparents and their parents and now their children, and they're sharing stories about some of us were father figures, brother figures, sister figures, mother figures. And uh, man, you can't be human and, and not let that hit you in the feel goods. You know, it's just like, oh. And, uh, you know, stories, guys are like, man, my family was abusive. The only, the only time we spent together where we weren't getting beat up was when Power Rangers was on. Or I used to watch it with my parents, and they were both killed in a car wreck. And now the only times I feel like I'm with my family is when I watch the show. I mean, just deep. Wow. And, uh, and then you have the majority that are like, I broke my mom's vase. It's your fault. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just like, it, it just stupid grins. It makes me happy, and I'm loving it. Well, it's always good to know that you're putting smiles on people's faces. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they're putting them on mine, so it works for me. Right. So you took some time off, and then you came back as the Gold Zeal Ranger. Yeah. How'd that come about? Uh, well, they called me up out of the blue and said, hey, you know, what do you think about coming in as the Gold Zeal Ranger and doing the second movie, uh, Turbo? And I was like, well, you know, I turned down the first movie. And they were like, yeah, we know. I was like, um, <coughs> well, let's talk. So we talked, and uh, I said, okay, let's do 17 episodes and uh, have some fun with it and then let's do uh, let's do the movie but I want to be a bad guy I don't want to be I don't want to be the leader I want to be a bad guy and uh, I could see the wheels immediately start turning and they're like ooh. next thing I know they're reaching out to Amy Joe Kimberly and they're like you should be a bad guy too and then the script came out and I was like oh this is a good time right. so uh, that's how it came about and it was it was a blast yeah, I, you know personally I think you make a better villain because that performance, I was like, yeah, that's a badass. I loved it. I actually, I have a new TV series uh, and movie project coming up called Black Salt. Yeah, I was told to ask you about that. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's going to be pretty wicked. Yeah. So and we're going to let the fans vote whether I should be good or evil. Can you give us, like, a little bit of what the show is about? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it, so they shot the short movie before they knew me. Um, and uh, Kiyumbe, who is the lead in the movie, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's this good-looking you know, lots of sex appeal, black man, and they're going to make him like the next uh, James Bond, the black version with kung fu skills. And he's, he's awesome, and he's a great fighter. He's talented, cool dude. And so he shot the, the short film. And then I met, uh, met with Sifu Robinson and some other people who tied me into Owen Ratliff, who's one of the producers. And we got to talk, and he's like, man, we want you involved with the series. Would you be willing to do that? I was like, yeah. I was like, but, you know, good guy, bad guy. And they're like, we, well, we don't know. Let's talk, blah, blah, blah. So I'm getting ready to help them do a lot of marketing. You're going to see it all across my social media. 
and um, I'm going to do a bunch of training videos with Sifu uh, Robinson and Sifu Lear and all sorts of uh, all sorts of fight training and stuff like that. Where I'll pick up another black belt with Master Lear or Sifu Lear, nice. and uh, then we're going to incorporate it. They're going to put me in the seventh edition. They're just coming out with the seventh uh, portion of their uh, of their comic book series where they're going to introduce my character. We still haven't decided what it is yet, and uh, we're going to blow this thing up. It's going to be global and. Uh, I love it because we're going to have uh, a, a black uh, superhero, we're going to have uh, Chinese representation, we're going to have Japanese representation in there, we're going to have some, some white folks in there. Big multicultural. It's, it's going to hit everybody and that's why I'm really excited about it because it's, I mean I hate to say it, but it's almost always a white guy that's a superhero and I mean that's personally cool for me, but I can see where there's a lot of other people out there that they want a superhero from their neck of the woods Right, right. and I can't fault that at all, I mean I want to get behind that. And Owen Ratliff, he wants to get behind that, and uh, all these guys. So uh, next couple of months, you're going to see some big advertisements, a lot of stuff coming down about Black Salt. It's going to be really cool. Uh, check out Black Salt Facebook or uh, BlackSalt.com, and you can see some of the stuff coming up. I'm shooting commercials for it next week in Orlando. Okay. So our media is getting ready to come out. It's going to be awesome. That sounds really cool, man. So you're a trained firefighter as well as an EMT? Uh, paramedic. Paramedic, okay. Yeah. Close enough, right? Uh, no, there's a big no. difference. Is there? Okay. That's okay. No, yeah. please explain it to me then. Okay, so you have National Registry, which encompasses all of the training. You have EMT Basics, which is your first, well, first responder, then EMT Basics. Okay. So all EMT means is emer emergency medical technician. That's just a prefix. It's what follows that that tells you how much training is behind it. Gotcha. So EMTB, EMT Basic, EMTI e is an EMT intermediate. Okay. They do more advanced life support. And then EMT Paramedic is the top. This, these are the guys that push all the drugs, do all the, the mojo, and carry all the responsibility for making the right or wrong calls. Um, so it's, it's uh, paramedic is a, is a college degree. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that. I learned yeah. something. It's so, years of training. It's, it's heavy. So you played a superhero, and now technically you really are one in the terms that you get to save people's lives, man. How does that affect you? Well, you know, honestly, it was Power Rangers that inspired me to, to go out and do something I felt like really affected lives. Um, it took me a while to find out what it was, but uh, I felt like I could really truly save lives as a medic, you know, on the street, in a bar, in a car, you know, sounds like a cat in a hat, you know, thing I'm running through, but it's, um, I've saved lives all over the world and I've been there when people have died. Um, I did it for four years in the Middle East. Um, I came home 2014, April. I've been home now for a while and I'm back doing this, but I, I think it was, everybody looking up to me like a hero that really inspired me to try and go be one. Right. So whether ever I, I got there or not, I don't know, but uh, maybe they'll talk about that when I die or something. I don't know. Yeah, you leave a legacy behind, no pun intended. I hope so. Another one, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so what was life for you like after Rangers? Because I'm, I'm, I'm guessing people would be like, oh, that's Jason, that's Jason, you know, and maybe it kind of, I don't want to be Jason anymore. I kind of want to be Austin. Yeah, when I, when I left the show, I mean, I was always fine meeting people, and, you know, that was kind of cool. Um, but I ended up, uh, you know, bouncing at nightclubs for a while, teaching martial arts during the day at different studios. Uh, I was homeless for a little bit. Um, and then I kind of picked myself up, and I got my GED. I finished two college degrees, and um, I, I left everything in L.A. behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't a shame or an embarrassment. It was, you know, I did my job. I'm proud of it but now I need to go be a man and do this. Um, and that's always the way I've been. You know, I get boresighted on what it is I'm going to accomplish and get with me or get out of the way. Right. You know, uh, no anger. I'm just focused. And um, so there, were, there was a lot of struggles. You know, I was a teenage boy trying to become a man after being in front of a, a world adoration type platform. And uh, there were some, some rude awakenings, you know. So, but it was good. I wouldn't change it. You know, it's part of what makes me me, and I'm yeah. down with that. I say the same thing. Let's talk Survival Zen. Okay. There's a scene I saw in the trailer, the heart-to-heart -heart scene. You know what I'm talking about? That's brutal. Yeah, that's, a very br that's actually the exact word I use to describe it. It's a very brutal scene. What's going on with Survival Zen? Survival Zen, we're hoping to finish shooting this year. Uh, we're, we're still talking to financers and things like that. Um, we have some folks that are interested. I'm, it's probably one of my favorite pet projects. Um, I can't wait to finish it. We actually have a trilogy set up. And the heart-to-heart -heart scene, essentially what happens is, is when I would find survivors, my, my character was trying to find people and keep them alive in an apocalyptic world where everybody was dying. 
but before I could get close to you, I'd have to quarantine you for 30 days. So usually I would find a house that was clean, you know, put people in there with supplies, you know, and give them what they needed to live for 30 days. Say, don't open the door, don't open the curtains, don't let anybody in the world know you're in here. Um, don't make contact with people, don't do anything like that because then you haven't been isolated. We needed that 30 days of isolation because that's how long it would take for the disease to, to rise. Okay. So in 30 days I would come back and if you were showing signs, then I'd hand you a gun and you could put a bullet in yourself rather than face a horrible death. Or in some cases, like this family, they had, they had faith values. They're like, we can't, we can't do that. Right. And then they're like, would you do it for us? Which ripped my heart out. And what you don't know is when the mother and the father line up heart to heart and they put their daughter across their chest so that one shot does it all. Yeah, that's kind of where the trailer cuts off at that scene. It's when the brutal. Yeah. And uh, what you don't know is that there's a cutback because before I came home, I lost my daughter. Okay. So when you see that and you see her look at me, I get a flashback of my own daughter. And so I'm, I'm like trying to hold it together and I got to pull the trigger. Mm. You know, and it's, uh, it, it's just... It's brutal. It's I, that's something I really, I'd love to see in its entirety. Because yeah. the trailer, like, I was just like, I want to I wanna see this. Yeah. You know, I really do. Um, so next year we got uh, Power Rangers. Yeah. Brand new movie coming out. How does that feel make to you knowing that this movie is possible because of something you helped start so many years ago? Kind of insane. Um, it, you know, they're going to carry on the legacy another 20 years. And uh, I know uh, I've already spoken with the actor who's going to be playing me. And I was like, man, get ready for the ride, brother. Hold on to something, because it's going to be just like that. And, um, and uh, I, I just, I'm thrilled to see what they're going to do. I've had some discussions. I don't have any contracts, but maybe there will be a, uh, a cameo. I just don't know. Yeah, but, uh, you know, everybody talks about it. They're going to go dark, you know, like Batman started light and went super dark, you know from pow bang boom to the dark night, right. you know? Um, so I'm kind of curious to see what they're gonna do with it. Um, I'm excited for it, and I'll probably take my kids to the movies to go watch it, you know? It'll be good times. Sounds, it sounds good, man. So my last question for you, won't hold you up anymore because you got a bunch of fans here waiting for you. What's one thing about you that fans can't find out about on social media? Well, to not, tomorrow night at my VIP, I'm gonna be premiering a four minute segment of a movie, of a short movie I shot last October. It's, uh, and while they've heard of Gideon's Frontier, nobody knew, well, in fact, I haven't even told people about tickets. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna have a surprise guest from the show, his name is Jason Narvey, and we're gonna air this four minute segment, we're gonna sign some still photos from the movie that, will never, that aren't on sale. Um, we're gonna donate the, the money to the foundation that's shooting the film, and uh, the, the project is basically about the War of 1812. I play a character called Simon Kenton. He plays a British general and another character called Gideon in the film. And um, it's, it's pretty, it's brutal. It's about the war in Ohio in 1812, the Indians and the British versus the frontiersmen. And I play a legendary frontiersman called Simon Kenton. So some of that people knew. Nobody knows yet that it's going to happen tomorrow night at my VIP. Um, Black Salt, you're maybe the third interview I've shared with. So you get that up, you're going to be one of the first. Three's the lucky number. That's right. That's right. Uh, so check that out. And then um, I have another film project. Please, sir. All I can tell you is this, because I'm under a non-disclosure. I will be shooting a short in L.A. this April, and it is heavy martial arts based. And you might know some of these faces. Get ready for some announcements in May. That's all I'm gonna say. Through social media. Social media. It's gonna. We're gonna put it out all over the place. Very nice. Well, Austin, man, I want to thank you for your time. We asked for five minutes. Probably got way longer than that. But I really appreciate it. I know the fans appreciate it. So thanks, guys, for watching.